They called it the war to end all wars. More destructive than anyone at the time could have imagined. None of its survivors are still with us, but their stories remain an important part of our history. of Austria's Archduke Franz Ferdinand on June 28, 1914 is the catalyst for the outbreak of war. Europe is divided. The Central Powers, consisting of Austria-Hungary, Ottoman Turkey, Bulgaria and Germany, are pitted against the Allied forces, Russia, France and the British Empire, which includes Australia. Italy and the United States join the Allies later in the war. The fighting bogs down into trench warfare. Traditional military tactics are no match for modern industrial weaponry. The fields of Europe have become a graveyard for millions of young men. Countless civilians are displaced. In April 1917, America declares war on Germany, assuring the Allies that reinforcements will eventually arrive and tip the scales in their favor. In November 1917, Russia withdraws from the war. The Eastern Front collapses. This allows Germany to move a million troops to France before the Americans arrive. They launch an offensive against the Allies and achieve a major breakthrough. But after years of desperate fighting and economic hardship, the German troops are exhausted. Their offensive fails. By mid-1918, the Germans are close to defeat. The Australian Corps prepares an attack on the Somme. Their commander, Lieutenant General Sir John Monash, begins planning a joint Australian and American operation near the French village of Le Hamel. Monash takes command of the Australian Corps on the 31st of May, 1918. He is the first Australian to do so. Renowned for meticulous planning, Monash integrates several tactical innovations to his battle plan to ensure every chance of success. Tanks are still a new technology in 1918, but their unreliability and cumbersome nature makes them unpopular with the troops. Monash has his soldiers and tank crews trained together for weeks to prepare for battle, creating bonds of unwavering trust. For several weeks before the battle, every day at 2.30 a.m., Monash orders his allied artillery to bombard the German positions with smoke, explosives and gas. This forces the Germans to don their gas masks every morning, which impedes their vision. But on the morning of July 4th, the day of the battle, Monash instructs the artillery to fire smoke shells. The Germans are fooled into wearing their gas masks. This gives the Australians and the Americans an advantage. Unencumbered by masks, they can see clearly and catch the Germans off guard with their attack. To ensure the Germans remain completely unaware of the 50 tanks and thousands of troops arriving at the battlefield, Monash orders 20 aircraft to fly overhead, pester the German lines and drown out the noise. Adopting an innovative combined arms approach, Monash draws upon lessons the Allies have learned from previous battles and new technologies now available. Under Monash's command, the men go into battle in close coordination. Plans for the infantry, artillery, tanks and aircraft are planned in great detail. The result is a meticulous 90-minute battle plan. Our objective to advance two kilometers along a six kilometer front and straighten the line near Le Hamel. Timetable of events is as follows. At 3.02 a.m., British tank crews maneuver into position. British and Australian aircraft will begin harassing fire, dropping bombs and German positions. At 3.10 a.m., the main artillery barrage will commence. 
This is the signal for the first wave of infantry to begin their attack on German positions. By 3.17 a.m., one of the three brigades of Australian and American troops will capture Pear Trench with support from British tanks. 3.28 a.m., infantry are set to reach the halt line after capturing Ver and Hamel Woods. At 3.51 a.m., the barrage moves forward. 4.03 a.m., the infantry reach their final objectives on the left. By 4.15 a.m., Hamel village will be captured and the line straightened. Infantry will reach their final objectives at 4.35 a.m. Now is your time to join Monash's army. Choose your position in the battle, infantrymen, airmen or tank crewmen, and find out how the battle unfolds. The artillery barrage provides cover for the men of the 15th Battalion attacking Pear Trench. At the sound of the whistle, our battle begins. Australian and American troops break through the razor wire at Pear Trench. Tanks flank and support us from the perimeter of Vare Wood, where the Germans hold higher ground, clearing a path for us to reach our final objective, Amel Village. As the battle was coming to an end, an artillery shell exploded near Lance Corporal Jack McCann of the 43rd Battalion killing him instantly. His commanding officer wrote that Jack would be very much missed, both for his soldierly qualities and unfailing cheerfulness, which was remarkable, and did much to lighten the monotony of life in the trenches for those who came in close touch with him. Jack was 22 years old. After only 93 minutes, all units had successfully taken their objectives, just three minutes longer than Monash's ambitious plan. As Australians and Americans continue to fight together, the lessons learned at Hamel have a major impact on the way the rest of the war will be fought. Allied commanders implement the successful combined arms approach of Hamel across the Western Front. Within months, the Great War is finally over. There are 16 million people dead and 37 million casualties. Almost half a million Australians voluntarily enlisted to fight. Over 60,000 died with another 150,000 wounded, gassed or taken prisoner. We reflect on the impact of the war on Anzac Day and Remembrance Day each year and modern military strategy still draws upon Monash's combined arms approach. To commemorate the sacrifice made by those who came before us, many of the objects depicted in this experience are now displayed in the Australian War Memorial. They are brought from the battlefield so you can see them firsthand. As we look to the past to inform our future, it is the reflections of Sir John Monash after the battle was won which best expresses the impact our young nation had upon the war. That the soldiers of the United States and Australia have for the first time been in such close cooperation on the battlefield is an historic event. It will live forever in the annals of our respective nations.